the spectrogram is an important the spectrogram is an important display of speech on the x-axis uh, across the bottom of the spectrogram we have time like in a waveform so we can see how speech is changing on the y-axis we have frequency like in a spectrum so we can see the different frequency components inside the speech sound which better mimics how sounds are perceived on the spectrogram display, darkness is used as a third dimension, showing amplitude on a dB scale, uh, like the vertical axis on a spectrum. Uh, in some cases, people use color on a spectrogram uh, to show amplitude. So here we have an example with a familiar waveform display in the top, showing two seconds of speech, and a spectrum display on the bottom, showing the same two seconds of speech with the two displays aligned with each other. However, in the spectrogram, um, up the side axis we have frequencies from low frequency at the bottom to high frequency at the top, and we have areas of darkness indicating higher amplitude locations on the spectrogram areas where things are uh, very light gray or white uh, are low amplitude areas of the spectrogram and how you would interpret that is a combination of both um, the time and the frequency so for example right here uh, at about 0.5 seconds we have high amplitude in this speech sound at around 3500 hertz whereas down uh, at about oh, 12 or 1300 hertz, we have relatively low amplitude within that same sound. So unlike the waveform display where we can see amplitude in um, uh, from the peaks to the troughs, basically, we get a more sophisticated view of amplitude in the spectrogram, showing us how each of the different frequency components uh, is in terms of amplitude. So, taking that uh, three-dimensional spectrogram information into consideration, here we have an example spectrogram with the question, which component has the highest amplitude? Among the three dimensions, the amplitude is represented by darkness. So for highest amplitude, we would be looking for the darkest region. And my opinion here would be its area C, uh, that has the uh, highest amplitude. If we switch to a different dimension and ask which has the highest frequency, well, frequency is represented on the y-axis, the vertical axis up the side. So among those three arrows, uh, the one that points to the highest location, which is again C, uh, is the uh, location with the highest uh, frequency. And then last but not least, we have a time axis in the spectrogram across the bottom. Um, visually, as we look at this spectrogram, it um, hopefully divides up into different similar looking chunks. Um, so asking about duration, how long each of these components are. Uh, if I divide this spectrogram into uh, a group of similar looking um, regions, uh, the region farthest over to the right marked by D appears to be the one with the longest duration. In terms of my rectangle, it's the one with the widest box. It's the one with the biggest span from start to finish along the x-axis. The spectrogram is created by making uh, a whole bunch of spectra, many, 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 many spectra, uh, plural of spectrum, I guess. Um, they are created by taking over overlapping windows uh, of the speech, so overlapping samples of the speech and creating a spectrum. 
these windows are typically uh, 0.005 seconds or 5 milliseconds long, so that's fairly short. And then uh, from one window to the next, we shift our time window by 0.002 seconds, 2 milliseconds. So we're doing something like sampling the frequencies of the sound about 500 times per second to get a picture of what the frequencies are and their changes over time. With a default spectrogram that uses a spectrum over this 0 0.005 second window, thinking about the way a spectrum is created, um, would we expect to get good frequency resolution and be able to see different frequencies clearly? Good time resolution and be able to see those frequencies changing quickly over time? Both or neither? Uh, in this case, with a very short time window, we aren't watching the sound for very long. That makes it difficult to get good frequency resolution. So what we get out of this is a, kind of a blurry picture of frequency, but a good ability to see it change over time. Different types of speech sounds in a spectrogram have a slightly different look to them. Because of the very short windows that are used in creating a typical spectrogram, uh, we can see variation even within the duration of one single cycle of vocal fold vibration. What this means is that when we're looking at a um, spectrogram, we will see vertical striation in periodic or in voiced speech sounds. So looking at this particular spectrogram, uh, the first region over at the left uh, has some dark vertical stripes in it that appear to be regularly spaced. So we would guess that that is a periodic speech sound. If we move over to this next region, we have mostly white. There isn't very much there. Uh, so we would figure what's happening there is really not much of anything. Silence. If we move to the next region, you may see what looks like a little bit of uh, vertical striping, but it does not appear to be very clear or very regular. This is going to be an indication that we're dealing with a sound that is not periodic or aperiodic. And that sound goes on for a certain uh, amount of time. So that sound is most likely a noise sound. The only sound we haven't identified so far is a transient. A transient is another aperiodic sound. And the reason it is aperiodic uh, is because it doesn't repeat because it happens briefly and then ends. So noises are uh, ongoing noisy sounds in the case of speech, things like fricatives, um, whereas transients will be very brief uh, sounds um, like the release of stops. I move on to my next region of this uh, spectrogram. I have probably the clearest uh, example of uh, regular vertical striations, uh, indicating I'm dealing with a periodic sound. This next region um, is uh, uh, large and loud at high frequencies, um, but uh, does not have clearly organized vertical striations. So that is going to be a noise sound. Another thing that uh, you can start to keep in mind as we uh, play with these exercises on spectrograms is that the, uh, the vertical striations, like we can see um, in the uh, previous region, uh, are the result of phonation. Uh, 
phonation is a vibration of the vocal folds, and that vibration is fairly low in frequency. So on a spectrogram, that would be below a thousand hertz. The fact that the under a thousand hertz region uh, in this particular section of the spectrogram looks very clear is another indication there's no phonation happening. Our next region is a brief, almost completely uh, white region. There's a little bit of um, uh, high frequency noise up at the top here, um, but kind of like we do with considering quasi-periodic sounds as close enough to periodic, we'll consider this close enough to a silence. Next we have um, this one kind of brief vertical stripe, um, and then things change over to a different type of region. Um, this is a good example of something that's probably a transient. It's a very brief sound. It doesn't appear to have an ongoing pattern um, for any substantial period of time. Next we have another reason re sorry another region with pretty clear vertical striations uh, looks stripy those look regularly spaced so that's probably phonation there is plenty of energy under a thousand hertz um, uh, so in the region where phonation would happen so that is a periodic sound our next region very clear a good example of silence uh, and then last but not least, we have this kind of big region at the end. There's a lower frequency area that's a little different from the rest of the sound. Um, so I will just tell you in this particular case, there is a transient hiding there. And then we proceed on to a noise that follows the transient. In this particular case, um, it's a stop followed by a fricative. So uh, the stop is a closure giving a silence, followed by a release transient, and then the fricative noise afterward. Um, don't freak out too much about identifying these as particular kinds of speech sounds. For now, we're focusing on um, what kind of overall sound is it. Periodic, um, no sound, or silence and something that's not periodic doesn't have a regular repeating look to it um, that either goes on for a while as a noise or seems to occur and then change uh, as a transient.